Welcome to this holiday episode of Consciousness Unleashed with Bonnie Spiratori and your co-host, Cynthia. Bonnie Spiratori is a master tracker, master energy healer, spiritual accelerator, and the founder of Spiritual <laughs> Acceleration. Today's topic is holiday spirit and holiday blues. So we're going to be talking about both spectrums of that. Uh, so Bonnie, uh, I know that during this time of the holidays, uh, there's there's some people who get really excited about this time. I know I have a friend who's always listening to uh, uh, Christmas music like 24 seven during this time. She just embodies the spirit of the holidays. And, but then there's also the other spectrum, which is people who are really, really depressed during this time. And it, there's so many factors as to why they might be feeling down. Uh, one thing might be even like seasonal. It could, there could be mm -hmm. seasonal uh, reasons for that. So, Mm -hmm. Just to, I guess, add to people's awareness of why why they might be feeling this way that, that could help them to navigate this time. What are some of the main factors for why people might be feeling down instead of feeling cheerful? Mm -hmm. Well, like you said, there there really is the winter energy frequency on the planet, you know, where we live, and <clears throat> that energy is a coming in time. You know, and when you when you think about winter. That means all the leaves have fallen off the trees, the, you know, the vegetation, the trees, the shrubs, flowers, plants, everything kind of goes into that dormant state. So it's natural for human beings to also go in to that pulling in, contracting, you know, like coming in for the winter, kind of like bears going to hibernation. So that really and truly is a factor, okay? We also have the collective consciousness, which is a little bit divided because we do have people with the holiday spirit. They get, like you were saying, your friend gets all excited and wants to decorate everything and listen to music and happy, happy. And then other people, you know, they're more affected either by the, the winter blues, so to speak, the collective energy. So that is also happening. So it just depends on where we're plugging into, you know, where we're going to because there's also that place where if I lean towards making Christmas fun and joyful and happy time of year, I'm going to be more into that collective consciousness. If I'm more into oh, bah humbug, you know, it's cold out, it's dark, I don't like it, I'm going to be plugging into the other, okay? And then we also have situations where the holidays seem to be a time when a lot of people check out where a lot of illnesses start to happen. So that time of the year, even though there could be all that joy and happiness, you know, when someone in your family is ill and possibly dying and during this holiday season, you know, it's going to affect you. Uh, in my world, um, I know I mentioned this before, so it's not like a big secret, but my, my kid's dad killed himself on Christmas. This was back in, what oh, year was that? It was back in like 80, 89, 88, 89, somewhere in there. And it just, it just ruined our Christmas. We, to this day, I, I mean, for me personally, I don't, I don't decorate, I don't do anything. But at that time, we, be prior to that, we did get into it. You know, we decorated, we had fun, we made things and kids were making stuff and making all the decorations and just, we had fun. And then when that happened, everything just kind of stopped. So for us, Christmas was never the same. So we do have people that were married and they lose their beloved, you know, older people and have been in relationship for many, many years and they lose their, their partner, their husband or wife, or, you know, there's a lot of crisis that happens. And so this time of year can be very painful for a lot of people. And because of the holidays, the holidays represent spirituality on some level, religions, you know, high level religion stuff like Jesus. And depending on what your belief systems are, I think it's important that people realize every culture has their own version of Jesus and Mother Mary, you know, and think about Buddha, you think about Kuan Yin, you know, it's just like, all of them have something different. So everyone has a special being that they're looking to as the savior, as a, you know, as a Messiah, as a chosen one. Okay. It's not just the United States where we have Jesus. Okay. So the, the religion aspects of it, you know, people coming together and it's a time for honoring, for love, for gratitude, for, you know, sharing and gifting and in a generosity and uplifting. Okay. So it's that time of year where any, it could go either way for people. 
either way. It just depends on what's happening in your world, what's happening in your life. So, and then also too, if someone has any kind of illnesses or, you know, illness, disease, not well, unhealthy, you know, when it's, when it's darker out, the days are shorter. A lot of people don't do really well with that kind of, you know, atmosphere. I know I, I used to go to Alaska a lot and winter, you know, <laughs> I remember sun came out around 10 and went down around three and the rest of the time it was dark. And then, then you got the other coming, you know, like in the, in J- June, you got almost, you got, you got 24 hours of light, even though the sun will dip down, that's still light. So we are affected by the energy. We're affected by the sun. We're affected by the light. Some people more than others. So it's just a lot of variables in, you know, what, what's going to happen for you. You know, for me, Cynthia, <clears throat> here's the thing. I do know without a doubt that if you're alive, you're going to suffer. Okay. In, you know, in other cultures, it's like all life is suffering. And it really, it's really true on some level. You know, there's all the physical, the emotional, the mental. I mean, it just goes on and on. And, you know, when we get to a certain level of clearing and healing, rather than going down that rabbit hole or going down the path of negativity, we can still feel joy and happiness all year round when we really start connecting with our own love and light, you know, and that's, that's been my journey. The, the whole, for me, it's all about that. And I get to experience so much joy and happiness and love and light, even when things are falling apart. I mean, it's just a state of mind. It's a state of being, but it's easier to live there when you don't have a lot of debris, a lot of wounding, you know, a lot of pain and suffering that hasn't been cleaned up. So again, it just depends on where you are, what you're living, uh, what your abilities are. Oh, and at my aunt, I have an aunt. I mean, she grew up in severe abuse, severe. And I remember even as a little kid, she was always positive, no matter what. To this day, this woman is still positive. And it just changes everything. I would look at her and look at her sisters and negativity, negativity, no matter what. That aunt was always happy. And, to the, and she's lived long. She's outlived all of her sisters. And she was the oldest. And, you know, she just keeps holding that joy and happiness. So it will help you. It will make you happier. It will extend your life. Um, I mean, again, remember, all life is suffering. It's really true. And can we still be happy? Can we still open the heart and experience a deep, profound love and joy at just being alive? You have a really great point there, Bonnie, about how we talked about how this time and ex- things externally could affect us in this time, but all of, all of it is really internal. So you talked a little bit about the collective consciousness energy of the holidays and how that could affect us negatively or positively. But we also have the ability to direct our focus on, on where do we want to actually be uh, focusing on and then uh, perpetuating that or creating more of that. Right. and doing the inner work. So I do want to touch upon a little bit about the collective consciousness energy mm-hmm. and the holidays, we'll maybe go in a little more. And mm-hmm. you did bring up something really interesting. A year ago, you did a clearing call, the Healing Holiday Grief, which was a really mm-hmm. good one. I was mm-hmm. editing this one the other day for you. So I, I was able to um, hear a, a, this interesting part. You brought in something during the clearing called the Holiday Light. And I, you don't probably don't remember this. I don't know because uh, it was only in this clearing that I heard about it. But it's mm-hmm. actually a energy that is, I guess, specific to uh, assisting people f- around the holidays or something. I, I wanted to maybe ask you a little bit more about perhaps mm-hmm. is that part of the collective consciousness too on the positive spectrum? Mm-mm. No, no. There's an actual frequency of light that actually penetrates and I mean it's there and people can actually tap into it okay and on some level remember you know belief systems affect the collective consciousness okay but it also affects our atmosphere and it affects it affects the energy frequency globally around the planet So when you think about holidays, okay, holidays mean celebration, family gathering, getting together, love, that kind of thing. And when we hold that, there is an energy frequency. I don't, it's not directly plugged into the collective consciousness around the planet because it has a frequency that goes up. 
or the energy literally comes down from the freak from the light, so to speak. Like if we look up into the heavens and there is this frequency of light that is that that joyful holiday spirit, it's actually there all the time. Okay. It's just that during the holidays, people are more in that holiday spirit where they're in that more giving and sharing. And it is that time of coming together, whether it's friends or family. So it has that celebratory energy frequency to it. If we took it back prior to the holidays, then we would be seeing the real thing that got created, which is, you know, like at the end, you know, when you, you're at the end of the harvesting, they have, you know, all the, the, the gatherings and the, the feasts and all of that celebrating things. The moon, you know, we've got, I mean, I'm sorry, the sun, we've got the equinox, you know, and the, um, <clears throat> What's the other one? The equinox and the, I'm forgetting. I know what solstice? it is. Just, solstice. Thank you. Yeah, the solstice. So we've got those. Those are also celebratory terms of year. People gathering, coming together. So it just became more of a religious thing, so to speak. And it became more of, you know, like the, the Santa Claus thing and a, a Christmas thing. And uh, um, some of it is about Jesus. Other other peoples have different holiday times that are that same same kind of time period, <clears throat> and that energy coming back to that light, that holiday spirit, that holiday light. There is a frequency of light that is a frequency of consciousness that does hold a higher vibration of celebration joy, happiness. The cool thing is, is anyone can tap into that. Anyone. Okay. And how we do that is, um, you know, with anything, when we bring into our awareness, into our mind's eye, sometimes I just ask people just to pretend or just imagine or mock something up. Okay. But we do it knowing that we are intentionally connecting with that energy frequency. Okay. So we want to connect with that holiday spirit that light spirit, that joyful, happy spirit. So basically we just, we just go ahead and create that. Imagine that, imagine it's just directly above us. And then imagine you're just seeing an amazing, brilliant, bright light, a lot of sparkly kind of frequency, but it has a high, high vibration. And it almost has almost like giggles in it, or, you know what I mean? It has that little laughtery kind of energy in it. So when we tap into that, or we, we see that and sense that, we take our awareness and go right into that energy. What it also does is it activates that frequency inside of us. So we can literally pull that energy down, kind of like we're bringing in cosmic energy, but we're bringing in that frequency of light and joyful, happy, laughter, fun, you know, connection. And we just bring it down and put it right in that heart center. And we can actually feel, sense, see, hear, taste, smell that frequency of that light in the heart chakra. So it's something to play with. And, you know, so if you're feeling down and not in the holiday spirit, play with that a little bit and just see what happens. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a real frequency. It's real consciousness. It is of the light. You know, it's nothing negative. It is of the light. And, you know, it's always, and again, it's always there, not just in the holidays, but that seems to be when that frequency is more prevalent because people are more in that state of, joy, happiness, celebration. Oh, thanks for that tip, Bonnie. That sounds amazing. The holiday light. I'll have to be doing that. I'll try it myself. Um, so mm -hmm. this time, obviously, uh, like we talked about, it's it's a time where so many people could feel really, really down. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that from your teachings, you talk about uh, using triggers, using th these mm -hmm. negative emotions you feel as an opportunity to go deeper and deeper into those emotions to clear them out. So mm -hmm. a part of me also sees that this time is a great, great opportunity to go deeper into your, your mm -hmm. um, healing journey. So do you right. want to talk about that as well? Yeah. So I did mention a little bit earlier, but th again, winter is pulling in, okay? Things pull in, contract, go dormant, get ready for spring opening, expanding. Okay. So we utilize that energy. We utilize this time to do deep unraveling, to do our profound emotional clearing. And when we do that, it opens us up for that, for the spring. Okay. And, and what's awesome about facing and doing our inner work 
is it changes our reality. It changes our suffering. It changes our depression, our anxiety. It, all, it changes how we experience the world. And for me personally, there's nothing more important than facing ourselves and unraveling the misperceptions of reality because that's what everything really is. And the wounding, the deep, profound wounding, the PTSD, you know, all the traumas and shock and despairs and all the broken hearts, all of these energies are with us. They don't just go away just because we want them to. They don't go away if we try to rise above them or ignore them or pretend they don't exist. Eventually, they're going to whack us. They're going to come right up and we're going to be feeling these emotions. So this is the greatest time of year. You got a lot of, you know, time of coming in, being with yourself and coming and dropping into emotions all the way. So, you know, holidays are always very triggering too. So we got the the, school, the spectrum of like joy, happy, depressed, sad, oh, family, you know, hate the family, love the family, you know, all that whole spectrum of love, hate. And this is the time for getting triggered. You, you know, you're going to get activated, triggered, things will be triggering you. And if you use those, it's a great way, a great opportunity to unravel your own wounding. And I just want to say really briefly that in order for someone to truly be unraveling, you know, when you're in a feeling state, it's really vital that you're not in a story, you're not in your mind thoughts, that when you really are in a feeling state, in order to truly unravel and be done, you have to fully know that emotional energy and the way to do that is to become it. Become it. If your heart is shattered and broken and you're crying, you can feel your heart breaking. You might feel like you're going to die. Cry it out. Go into it. Drop in all the way so you are that emotion. The moment you have a thought, the moment you have any words, sensations, distractions, you're no longer unraveling. So this is really important. I mean, if you're going to do your inner work, do it right. Otherwise, you're spinning your wheels. You're you know recycling your emotions and things aren't really changing. But I've been doing this work for 36 years now, and I promise you, if you're doing your emotional work, you will be changed. That energy does come out and leaves the body, and then you are more in that state of happy, joy, <clears throat> connected with the own, your own self, which is all what we all want. We want to be able to express ourselves, be the authentic the us, and no capitulation, no capitulating anything where we are doing something we don't want to do or saying yes, we want to say no, you know, no, it's like a true authentic shift and change occurs. So this is a great time for that. I mean, you know, the season going down, it gets dark earlier. It's a coming in. The energy is all working with you to come in, drop into these really deep places. So in a few months, we will be merging out full of light and happy joy like spring. <laughs> So for those who are uh, feeling really depressed during the holidays, of course, they could go and, and do that deep inner work. But let's say in the moment um, they're triggered by something when they're seeing family, let's say they're in a family gathering. And what mm -hmm. that's one of the issues why they they have some uh, holiday blues is because maybe they have toxic family relationships. And mm -hmm. I know for me, um, something you taught I'll just bring this up like as a word of advice for people I could share too, because it, it was something I got from your Know Thyself program, which is mm -hmm. really great, which is um, in the moment of something occurring, if I have a reaction or a judgment, just to uh, stay within myself and, and uh, focus on my heart and open, like leave, have my heart open. That to me has been a really incredibly uh, helpful tip, it, like in mm -hmm. the moment when I'm in something. And I know that's going to be happening for a lot, happening for a lot of people during this holiday season, is when they're interacting with family or something else. Like in that moment, they can't really go and do that deep inner work right then and there. So, is the, is that is that a tip that you would offer people, or do you have a, maybe another mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. tip if within the yeah. moment? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because so, there's going to be a lot of people going places where they're with friends or family that they don't really like or, or they've got issues with or they got judgments or reactions to, okay? So if we remember, and I think this is really important to, that we help people to understand, everyone is a divine being. And the core of all beings is love and light, okay? Remember, it's just the wounding and misperceptions and then the development of the ego that we become other than who we really are. If we can remind ourselves and remember 
one thing is everyone's doing their best. Everyone is wounded. Everyone has misperceptions of reality. Everyone's drawn conclusions. And here you are in that awareness with people who don't have that awareness. So you have a little bit of an edge right there, okay? But, and because you do have that awareness, you can actually make a choice that does say to your own self, all right, I'm gonna be with people, family, friends. I have a real issue with Uncle John or whoever. I really don't like being around Uncle Fred because he's a, you know, he tries to touch you and all that kind of stuff. So again, because, you know, everything is about suffering. We're always in suffering, but we can still have joy and laughter and love and light in the midst of suffering. Okay. So it's up to us. Now we're the ones who have the awareness that, ah, everyone's got that love and light. Everyone's broken, shattered, wounded. Everyone's doing their best, but Hey, I got a little edge here. I know who we are. I know who I am. I know that I am love and light in my core. So when I'm around that uncle Fred or even uncle John, I just, I know not to get close. I know how to do that. And then rather than getting all upset and angry, what if I just laugh? What if I just laugh at what he's doing? Okay. There's different things that we can do that, that kind of help us take the edge off. So for example, let's just say with uncle Fred, you know, he's that one who, you know, he's kind of creepy, wants to touch the touch people, touch the girls or whatever. So I can put a big old caricature face on him, make him into some kind of creature thing or animated animal or whatever that just cracks me up. And then it makes it easier. So every time I look at him, I'm going to imagine that energy or imagine that that animal. And he's just, you know, this caricature of, you know, playing out. And then I just can laugh at it rather than, oh, I don't like him. Don't get close to me, you know rather than being in that all bad mood kind of energy and that that feeling of like repel, repulsion and wanting to get away. It's like, all right, let's just play with this. Have fun with this. And then also you can do that little exercise, plug into that, that, that light of the holiday light, the holiday joy, the happiness, the celebratory energy frequency, bring that in and hold that in the heart center. You know, and then also I know that being around our parents, you know, we grew up with our parents and for some people, it's really challenging to be around your parents. Maybe they're just really negative or their beliefs are different than yours. Or, you know, maybe one person believes in Trump and the other one believes in Biden or maybe the mask thing is happening. Well, you know, for one thing, don't ever bring politics or religion into any mix. All right. Leave it. Just leave it. And again, coming in with that lightness in the heart, you know, for forgiveness and allowing people to be who they are, knowing we don't need to convince anybody, change their points of view. We don't need to do anything. That's another component right there is on some level, we want them to change or we want things to be different. And the truth is, if we can literally relax into and accept, this is the way they are. They're not going to change. Can I just love them? in that place of where they live in their consciousness and awareness. Because ultimately, we do have love for all, all beings, but we especially have love for our mother, father, okay? Maybe we're not feeling it anymore, but in way, way back, we did. We had that love and it just got buried. So the love is still there. Here's another thing that is really important. Love is not what hurts. People think love hurts. Love does not hurt. It's the abandonments and the betrayals and the punishments and the humiliations and all the things, all the other emotional components that hurt. Love does not hurt. So if we allow ourselves to remind ourselves, oh, yes, all right, I'm with my mother. She's very negative. Sometimes it's really hard to be around her. And, you know, there is love there. And I'm going to activate that. I'm going to cultivate that. I'm going to remind myself. I just love her just as she is. Because here's the thing, ultimately, everyone wants to be loved unconditionally, exactly as they are, exactly as they are, unconditional love, everybody wants that. So if you're listening to this, you got a little bit of an edge again, over most of humanity. So if everyone just wants to be loved unconditionally, just as they are, then give them what they want and watch what happens for you. It will change your life. It will change your reality. You'll discover that love really does heal 
And love is the way, it is the answer. Because when someone else is feeling loved, I promise you, they're gonna respond differently to you. You did bring something up a few times throughout this conversation, Bonnie. And I want some clarification on that is you talked about uh, life is suffering. And, but could we get to a point where we're so healed within that it's no matter what's happening, even though outwardly it, it seems like really just catastrophic, everything that's happening, but within we're in a place where life is joy. So mm -hmm. even though yeah. there's, there's it, you, you could, ex you could see the truth of that, but your experience and your perspective um, doesn't have, you're not actually experiencing that particular uh, perspective. And so life becomes joy. Is that, could you <laughs> expand upon that? Yeah, a little yeah, bit? yeah, yeah, of course. Yes. And it's really, it's actually really true. Okay. So in higher teachings, you know, the, the frequency or the, the energy of attachment that will, I guarantee you, if you're going to be attached to everything, you're going to suffer a lot. Like, okay, these are my glasses. Don't be touching them. Oh, you broke my glasses. Now I'm all, all hurt, angry. Okay. But if I'm not attached to these glasses or anything, it doesn't matter what happens to them. I'm not going to be in suffering. Okay. The truth is it's just a material object that can be replaced. It isn't, you know what I mean? And then there's, of course, there's other valuable things that we place, uh, um, you know, a value to that. Oh my goodness, this was passed down to the family and you broke it or whatever. Okay. Again, everything is impermanent, everything. And when you really understand that, that the, the, the truth of impermanence, everything's going to go away at some point in time, we're all going to pass, we're all going to die, everything we thought of great value, you know, we wanted other people to value it when we're gone, they might just dump it. Okay. So our own wounding is what keeps us attached to material things. Our own wounding keeps us attached to people and, and wanting them to be an act and live a certain way. Okay, so the suffering comes through all of these attachments. The suffering comes when we want things to be a certain way. The suffering comes when we can't accept life as it is. Like, for example, a little cloudy out today, a little rainy. Okay, now I could be all upset and hurt and angry. Oh, my goodness, I don't want the sun out. I could be all huffy and puff, you know, all upset and, you know, hating, my, hating life, okay? Or, you know, okay, we got an overcast day. Alrighty then, let's get on with the day. Keep my heart open. Keep experiencing love. And again, it's like accepting what is. There are things in life that are going to happen. They're going to be. We cannot stop it. There's a divine plan unfolding. Everything on the planet right now is all part of that divine plan. There's going to be a lot of people leaving, a lot of, a lot of horror, horrors that we're going to experience. And in the very core is always that frequency of love and light. So attachments and suffering, um, it, it looks like what you're asking is, does the suffering come to an end? Absolutely, it comes to an end. Absolutely. Again, when we are able to be in the world with the heart open, witnessing life rather than making it wrong or finding fault or wanting things to be a certain way or to change it or make it different or to hate somebody because you don't believe what I believe or you know, uh, all the different belief systems we've got, what happens is, is we become more sovereign within our own self, the heart is more open, like almost all the time, Cynthia. And it's just a constant state of, uh, it's not like a, an intense feeling, you know, it's not, it's not, I'm not talking nirvana, I'm not talking going into samadhi, I'm not talking any kind of high, high, you know, where we're blown open, I'm talking the true frequency of unconditional love and light. That energy is a peaceful kind of a joy, a lightness inside, a lightness from within. It doesn't need and doesn't grab hold of, it doesn't attach to, it doesn't find fault with, it doesn't make wrong, it doesn't make good, all is well. And when we are living in that space, there's, you know, no matter what, stuff's going to happen, okay? There's going to be natural disasters, there's going to be losses, there's going to be babies born, there's going to be all kinds of things happening. and we're not so whipped around, you know, we're not uh, ruled by our emotions and we're not judging people and finding fault with people. It's just like, there's just more of this open heart, the capacity of just joy and happiness and lightness and seeing humanity and their suffering and loving them in all of it, no matter what, 
And ultimately, anyone who is pursuing their own liberation to end their own suffering, you're going to get lighter and lighter and lighter, losing more and more of your attachments naturally, because that's what happens when you are that energy of pure love and light. You, there's nothing, there's no need of anything, meaning you don't have to have that kind of pin or you don't have to have, you know, this or that. Maybe if you, if you want it, you'll have it. That's because only because you choose to have it, not because emotionally you have to have it. So everything begins to change as we heal our, our emotions, the emotional wounding. And then we do live more in a state of presence, consciousness, less attachments, uh, less judgments, less fault finding. And, you know, the suffering is not, it just doesn't compare because the suffering comes from our emotional attachments, okay? The emotional frequencies, wanting something to be different, a different way, believing someone's hurt us, believing all these false beliefs, all our conclusions. So when they don't exist, who are we absent all of our wounding? Love and light. <laughs> So Bonnie, do you want to end with any closing words on about the holidays? I do, actually. So everything is a belief, okay? See, I, I live in, out in nature. I've spent a lot of time. I went to the I went to the mountains when I was 19 and lived alone in isolation. And then I went to the desert. Okay. So I do know nature. And absent knowing what day it is. Nature is just nature. There is no Christmas. There's no Easter. There's no Thanksgiving. None of those things exist in nature. Okay. So for me, the recognition that everything is a belief, man made belief. All right. And since I know that, I can choose what beliefs I want to play with or buy into or be a part of. In reality, I actually don't buy into hardly any beliefs, anything that I am aware of that I'm believing, I also am aware it's just a belief, it's not an absolute. So when we, when we recognize that it's just a belief, it's a belief that was created in a, in a, in a way to either bring people together or, you know, or just something to, again, it does pull people together. You know what I mean? The holidays pull people together and it's a time of celebration, but again, it's all a belief. And what you're really doing is you are connecting with your loved ones, beloved ones, beloveds, or, or supposedly your loved ones. Okay. Again, it's, it's family. You don't, you might not always be happy and the holidays are still a belief and you are the one making a big deal out of that belief. You know, you're making it, you're judging it, making it good, bad, right, wrong. If other people aren't buying into your beliefs. So remind yourself, ah, it's a belief. Is it really worth, you know, hating people over or resenting people or wanting to, you know, wish they were gone or, you know, not liking them? What it's really about is a time to come together. Why don't we just come together and let me play with keeping my heart open and shining light and share the gift of me, which is pure love and light. Help change my family, help change my friends by sharing my love and light. That's all you need to do to help people get activated and it'll start awakening that frequency inside of them. And then people begin on some level, and lo and behold, all of a sudden, hmm, they're seeking their liberation. Wow, how did that happen? Because you held that, you brought that, you brought it home. Thank you so much for your time today, Bonnie, um, talking about the holiday spirit and the holiday blues. I hope that this helped everybody to find more holiday cheer. Um, what will definitely help you find more holiday cheer is the group clearings that Bonnie has in the shop that are all about the holidays. And there's a lot of them throughout the years you did, uh, maybe I would say six of them. So I'll put the links for all of those in the show notes. Uh, mm -hmm. So yes. So go ahead and check that out if you're interested. Um, there'll be all of them will be there. I think there's a, you know, a package too, right, Bonnie? Is, mm -hmm. Do you know if there's a package? I can't remember, but I think there probably is. Yeah. I'll check. And if there is, I'll put the link below as well. Uh, so once again, thank you everybody for tuning in to Consciousness Unleashed. Please follow us on all the platforms that we're on. And uh, thank you again, Bonnie. Mm. Thank you, Cynthia. Right. Bye, everybody. <laughs>